Welcome back, Todd. Welcome back, Mark. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Mark Valdez, and this is Todd London. And uh, we're here doing uh, the art part, a two-person theater conference. Uh, and we are on topic four. Yes. Um, which we're calling the aesthetics of civic engagement. Aesthetics of civic engagement. Um, uh, before we go any before further, just yeah. to again thank HowlRound uh, and Vijay Matthew for live streaming us and uh, Art Change Us here at uh, Cooper Square for hosting us and all of you, three people, 12 people, <laughs> uh, 2,000 people Hello. who have checked in. <laughs> thank you for uh, participating. And we really do hope this is participatory. So uh, feel free to write in with comments or questions at any point. We tend to be taking them in the last 10 minutes of each 40-minute segment. But um, we're really happy to hear from you and to be able to talk to you and to hope uh, that you will have your own conversations um, because we don't want to be the only ones whose voices are hanging in the air on Please. these subjects. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you have questions, you can uh, email us at theartpart at howlround.com or via Twitter, hashtag howlround, or on the um, Facebook page of howlround. And if you are going to have a conversation of your own, Please let us know through the art part at HowlRound.com. Uh, let us know now if you'll commit to this. This is our art part May Day challenge, May Day challenge. but uh, the challenge <laughs> remains open even when we go home today. We have two commitments so far, and we'll shout them out again at the end of the um, at the end of the conference. Yeah, at the end of the conference. <laughs> <laughs> we have two more sessions. This is on the art of civic engagement. And the next session will be on uh, lineage and legacy in the theater. Cool. So I'm going to start us out by um, turning on Mark. Um, uh, first, I'm going to embarrass you and congratulate you. Mark just got a great uh, award uh, and grant from the uh, Americans, Americans for the, the Arts. Arts. And tell me what it's called exactly again. It's the, uh, the Johnson Fellowship um, for artist uh, working in community transformation. Community transformation, wow. Congra good. That's amazing. That's a big check, too. That's a big check. Um, so um, we've been talking uh, most recently about playwriting and sort of the individual voice, genius, flowering. We've <laughs> been talking before that about the group genius, community of working in collective or ensemble. Um, and it's interesting, as we stopped, uh, for our little break here, Mark um, remarked that it seemed like a strange transition now to shift to community-based work, civic-engaged work. Um, and I think of it also uh, under, to a certain extent, the umbrella of social justice. And, yeah. um, uh, and interestingly, I think it's less of a sharp turn, but I, I want to talk about that. Um, so to me... First of all, let's talk about what we're talking about, and I'm going to turn to you because this is your, really your, your field. Um, what do we mean when we talk about civic engagement, socially engaged work, social justice in the theater? Uh, I, I think it's work that lives in a social practice or, or, or a, a, a civic practice, a, a term uh, uh, Michael Rode and uh, Center for Performance of Civic Practice kind of coined. Uh, uh, which uh, by which they mean that work that is driven by the needs of uh, non-arts organizations or, or community partners and that uh, artists bring their tools and their resources to address the need of somebody other than the artists themselves. Uh, still satisfying and taking on, can, does the work of the artist, but, uh, but also is serving a, a need outside of the artist. And social practice, of course, uh, uh, art that is uh, driven by the artist, um, that is uh, addressing social needs, um, kind of uh, social issues, social justice. Mm -hmm. So, okay, b before I, I'm gonna try and provoke you like you provoked me before, but <laughs> um, before I do, um, so I became aware that such work in communities was happening in our lifetime um, probably in the 
late 80s. Um, I was working at, um, here at NYU with a wonderful uh, woman named Jan Cohn Cruz, who's really a leader in sort of documenting this work and thinking about this kind of community-based, socially engaged, civic engaged work. Um, and I became aware that there were companies working out of Apple Shop and the Roadside in Whitesburg, Kentucky, Junebug in New Orleans, um, uh, hubbed around um, uh, alternate routes in the South, a, a sort of congregation of such theaters, um, and uh, really l in lots of places around the country, a road company was still in existence mm -hmm. down in Tennessee, um, and uh, later Prog Progonis in the Bronx, and so on and so forth. Um, and it seemed to me at that time that there was a great connection between these theaters and place, that they were very much theaters about the place they were, which I later learned goes back to a whole kind of rural arts movement. Um, to what extent is that true? I, how much is community engagement also about place engagement? Uh, I think there. I think it's absolutely connected. I think it's it's uh, it's it's um, they're 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 very much tied together because uh, the community makes up the place. You know, they, they, it is a, it is not just any community. It's a community, often geographic, could be ideological, could be kind of religious, faith based, could be could be anything. But but there's a there's a shared uh, whether literal ground uh, uh, or kind of. Um, spiritual ideological ground but it's but it's but it's grounded in place mm -hmm. and so I, I think they're absolutely absolutely one connected you know like i i don't know how you know, the, the the work itself doesn't have to necessarily be about place but i think that's the difference going you know like thinking about the conversations we've been having you know about like groups and individual like there's something in this work that um you know the, i i, I spent many years working with Cornerstone, and one of the things that we always struggled with is that we make plays so specifically that they're not going to be, they're not going to be published, they're not going to be, they're not going to be yeah. done, it's not going to go to Broadway, it's not going to be picked up by other companies, it's right. like, it's, it's a one-time, one-place right. event, and, and some of them live as literature or as kind of document or as study, but, but they're so specific. Right. Um, for their time, for their place, for the, for the, the place, people for the who people. are engaged in the making of them. Mm -hmm. um, so here's the thing, and I don't mean it to be provocative. It, it, this is the way that I've heard this uh, conversation happen. Um, and um, it tends to be uh, a conversation that in certain parts, sectors of our field, the more sort of um, Western, canonic, you know, stressing the sort of a certain kind of professional virtuosity in work. There's a sense of, yeah, that's really important, but it's just not that artistic. Right. Yeah, it's not, or, or not good. It's not that, especially if you're using amateur actors working right. with professionals. And then I've heard the people who've been doing this work for 30 plus years who are excellent say, I'm, I, I'm just not even going to have that conversation anymore mm -hmm. um, because our work is art and it's excellent and we're just in a different, it's just a different part of the art. It's a different tradition. Yeah. And then there, I've heard this from, a Cornerstone is a good example because they work with playwrights who haven't always worked in community-based ways and so on. And it feels like Cornerstone struggled over the years with um, people's perception of are they an artistic theater, or a sort of more traditional theater, are they community-based theater, do they care about aesthetics, do they only care about social justice? Mm -hmm. So I guess my question for you is what makes these a whole? Why are we talking? And this, I don't, I don't, I say this to say the question, not because it's my question, but why are we talking about civic engagement in a conversation about the art part? Mm -hmm. uh, 
lots of things there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> no, but it's great because I mean, like, I do think like that, you know. So, so I think I heard this from Lisa Mount, and I've repeated it since then. But that there was something that happened, you know, and 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 you know, like when the NEA said address uh, artistic merit and artistic quality, and suddenly they became two different things. And suddenly, you know, if you were excelling at one, you didn't have to excel at the other. Yeah. Or, and I think the NEA would probably argue that we want you to excel at both. Uh, uh, but, but having been on many of those panels, you know, we kind of took it as either or. It kind of got split. And I think, I think we internalized a lot of that. And I think it became that question of it's either community or it's good. You know, like we, we, there's no there's no good applied to like once you do that you just kind of like, forget about it and just accept it as feel good, um, and 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 I you know there's, a, there's some of that that I I, I I understand but I think any everybody I know who's working in this in this world you're you're <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, you know like nobody wants to make bad work like nobody wants to do mediocre work. And I've been in so many like, rehearsal rooms with community members who demand that the work be the best. And they're really clear, like, this has to be on the same level as, like, the best theaters you can think of because it's my community, it's, my, it's me who is up on the stage talking to my neighbors about our place, and we will not accept anything that is less than excellent. I think oftentimes we just don't know how to define excellence. So, so yeah, if you're looking for virtuosity of a performer, it, it's a different kind of virtuosity. Like I think the, I think the non-professional performer brings things, brings qualities, brings personalities, brings experiences that are as virtuosic on stage that, that it, it just looks different, but it's still virtuosic. Mm -hmm. And I think because we, we haven't developed collectively the, the tools or the, the criteria what to look for, that we just, we, it's easier not to look at all or just to just kind of just brush it generally, you know, because A, we don't want to be jerks who are being or kind of saying bad things about somebody who's not a professional actor or we just don't know what, what to look for and so we just don't talk about well, it. Well, what do we look for? I mean, if you're talking about <coughs> legible artistic practice um, mm -hmm. and that practice in, and the, the uh, methods include uh, amateur and professionals, sure. um, how do you read excellence? There's a couple, of, so, so recently um, Animating Democracy uh, brought a bunch of people together and created this aesthetics framework for looking at art for change. And, and there's some, so some, there's some um, things to look for, a series of questions. You know, they don't define it. They're just like, these are some things that you might want to look at. Uh, my favorite, who I, and I think this is kind of one of the best, is uh, Jerry Stropnicki um, created these five A's. I think he may have added a sixth, but uh, I don't know what that means. But, but the five are um, audacity, authenticity, accuracy, artistry, and um, uh, 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 agency. agency, yeah, agency. And he said, like, look for, like, where does that live? And part of it is, like, artistry. Like, part of it is, like, it has to be of, right. of, of an aesthetics that we understand, that we know, and we know things like presence. Like, you know, we know how to look to see, like, how someone takes a stage and fills a space. We know how to look for kind of, these these moments of of um, we're Authenticity. safe <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, you know, we we know how to look for kind of these joyous moments or these really honest moments, and 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 it doesn't it doesn't it's not different. We just kind of like I don't know. Like, I, I, well, it's interesting because. You know, as you're talking, I'm flipping back to our conversation about ensembles, and we had talked uh, we had talked a little bit about improvisation, but we were talking about too like we, we were adulating the Rude Max and and uh, some others, and some of the companies that we were talking about actually, 
um, kind of celebrate an almost amateur aesthetic. Sure. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a way, I mean, it's a kind of odd contradiction that we might, you know, love it if, um, oh, I don't know, what's a, what's a, a company, a, a Tony company that um, actually goes for a kind of amateur feel uh, like the, is it, it's not 600 Highwaymen. Um, like, yeah, 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 like. But they, they, they will involve people. They'll I mean, involve they will involve people and they'll do that. Yeah, yeah. And then, but then we look at like um, a community-based social mm -hmm. justice aesthetic mm -hmm. or, you know, a, a set of priorities and we'll, we'll diss it for the kind of amateurism. Mm -hmm. So what is that? Is that a kind of class thing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think so. I mean, it, it's, um, I think part of it's like framing, you know, like, like, like um, we know how to view, if you, if you put it on the stage of your most prestigious places, Right. We know how to look or at it. Or your edgiest will, spaces. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We will we will kind of bring <laughs> into it kind of an openness to like I'm here in this space in that edgy space because I want to experience something different, something that makes me question, relook at what I think, right. how to look at it, what it might be, and we will accept it. And if you go to the high school auditorium, you right. are immediately like feel like you're at your kids play and and yeah. you will not take you know you will just accept it as nothing to be taken seriously right. to challenge yourself right so okay so i'm going to take this I, I'm, i've Go been putting yeah. you on the spot Great. but i mean i feel like this is connected to our conversation about playwrights as well that ultimately everything turns towards the audience in the theater mm -hmm. more than it does uh towards the reader when you're a solitary writer so we rely on that final event and the questions around this kind of engaged work are questions around, I think, what is the role of the audience? What, to what extent are we, try, are we mm -hmm. positioning our audience not just as ticket buyers, but as community? Yes. So we want to reflect things that either speak to or from the community. We want to challenge the community and um, uh, to some degree. And we want to open channels of humanity with the community. Mm -hmm. And um, so I feel like in a way this is, it's, I mean, I set up the question, but I feel like it's a false distinction, yes. even on a level of intention. So. Let's leave training behind for a minute, because that's, I think, what we talk about when we talk about a, um, a, a virtuosity, virtuosity, right? We're really talking about training and a certain kind of lens mm -hmm. with which to watch work. Because when you say the high school auditorium, I think, man, I was so happy when I saw totally. my fifth grader I love going to play, play practice. Nick Bottom at mid <laughs> in mid You know what I mean? Yes. It's like I when you see kids dance, it's like, okay, that, I forget the name of that amazing dance company in Tel Aviv, mm -hmm. um, or the nine-year-olds. Yeah. You know, that's where I live, you know? So they're different, but the spirit, the engagement is the same. When mm -hmm. I saw, um, so the closest I've ever been to a Cornerstone production was uh, at New Dramatist, we did a partnership with Cornerstone, playwright James McManus, yeah. and it was a piece that was done, uh, became Love on uh, San, San Pedro. Pedro. So it was with the uh, in, uh, people who lived on Skid Row and several service organizations on Skid Row, and the cast was half-ish Cornerstone actors and half-ish residents of Skid Row. And it was just a fantastic piece of theater. Yeah. And in a way, it was made greater by knowing that that person who was doing that monologue mm -hmm. actually had been living on the street six months before and yet had everything inside of him to do that. Mm -hmm. Or recently, I've, I've, I've in love with this work called Jack And, which is Kaneza Shawl in oh, a yeah, collaboration yeah. with Cornell Alston, I think mm -hmm. is his name. And Cornell was 
a long time incarcerated uh, man and um, the piece is about re-entering the world and they did it together and Kaneza has this deep, I mean she's worked with Elevator Repair Service and the yeah. Worcester Group and all those kind of like arty ensembles and it's about re-entering society but it's it flips from like sitcom to you know art installation to monologue about the bakery where he works at night to get mm -hmm. by and it's a totally artistic piece and completely personal and Cornell is not a professional actor but he's dedicated his life to this work and Kaneza to him and it's again it's kind of more extraordinary for not being you know right out of Juilliard, which there's nothing wrong with Juilliard. Nothing wrong, it's great, good school. So I feel like, um, and that I was sitting next to like in the theater where I saw it the first time, I was sitting next to two guys who had come through a prison program. And then I was sitting next to Ann Hamburger, who's the producer of On Goddard Arts, yeah. which is one of the most yeah. amazing avant-garde companies in it. I feel like sometimes, you know, like people will see it, like what you're talking about is a great, is an example of excellence, of, of virtuosity in however you want to define it, but, but you feel it, right? You, you know that I'm watching something really good. And I feel like sometimes not all work is always good. But that's true of, of every everything. Exactly. Kind of work. So that's just like saying like I'm never going to ever see a play because I saw a bad play once. Right. You know what I mean? And, you know, and I feel like sometimes somebody has the bad experience uh, uh, of seeing a community-based play that just kind of doesn't have that level, that hasn't risen to that level of full virtuosity for whatever reason, you know, not the right context, underbaked, not ready. You know, it, it, there's a, any number of reasons why a work may kind of miss its mark. Um, but because of that, they're just, just, they're just like, oh, well, I'm just never, it's always bad. Right. And, and right. Every, every part of our field has its hit and misses, right. and we wouldn't just write one whole thing off. So, so th since we're living in love today and we're yeah. doing the art part, let's talk about what we love about that work. Totally. I mean, like, I, I, I get, for me, like, it's the, I, this is how I prefer to make art. Like, there's something about the joy of just doing it. It's that thing that you remember, that the passion, the thing that took you there in the first place, that just let you, that just lets you lift that up every single time. And, and there's a, um, a none, none of it's precious. There's nobody's, like, like in, in all the work that I've done kind of in community, kind of in community settings, it's, you know, people ask really hard questions. People are, are constantly questioning you. People are constantly, there's agency to just always throw out ideas, so people are always trying to make it better or saying like, <laughs> why are we, like, we just, we don't, we don't do it this way. Like, no, you know, and, and, and in ways that just kind of make the process and I think the product for me just like more rewarding and it's more interesting and it feels like, you know, in, in the previous discussion around playwrights and, and, and individuals, it feels like that, that modeling, that Anne Bogart quote of like, we, we are making a society in, in its truest in its truest sense of we are all coming from a whole bunch of places, from a whole bunch of backgrounds, and not everybody has bought into the idea that we're that this is gonna work, but I'm here to try to, to, to try to make it work. And so how do you arrive there? Yeah. And there's you know, um, yeah, I also think like that when we started you're talking about place, I also think about that Campesino and like the actos of like um, Taking taking these tools and making them useful to like organizing and right. and it goes and there's something about this that goes because you're in the fields you're in the fields and field. you're on strike on a bed on a flatbed truck right. on strike there's there's people with guns wanting you to stop <laughs> yeah <laughs> no um, and and there's you know there's power like right. this and it's it has to do I. I I'll, I'll stop here in just a second, but but one of the questions I think about is a question that was posed to me um, by the woman who used to run the Cuyahoga Arts Council, whose name I'm blanking on. But but she just she asked, what is the role of the public in the public arts agency? And as as we have these public institutions, 
what is the role of the public in our, in our institutions? And we, we're really good at doing the four. And, and what I derive, the, the satisfaction I derive and the love I derive is the doing with. with. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. And I, again, it's like I've been, um, I've been editing the, col the collected writings of Zelda Fitchhandler, who founded um, Arena Stage and really the field with um, a, a, a couple of other you know, important people, Nina Vance, Margot Jones, the field of institution, what became institutional theater, regional theater. And her thing is always, it's not this or that, it's this and that, yes. right? And so I don't want to create a sense that we're having to choose one or the other. Um, I guess, you know, the other thing is I keep thinking because we started with why we fell in love with this art form. And I, for me, because like you, I've made my life in the theater in one way or another. Part of what it is is that I see something and I want to be it or I want yes. to do it. <laughs> yes. So there's that thing about us that we aspire to that which is before us if it's beautiful or if it's exciting, or if it's courageous, or whatever, we follow by wanting to like, oh, I want to hit that home run, or I want to dance that dance, or whatever. And so there's something about the work that you're describing and the kind of work within community, which is like, I want that for everyone. I want them to want to make it. So if they're in there making it with you, with Cornerstone, with Carpet Bag, with June Bug, with you know, Pregonas with roadside, wherever, then that's where it lives. I want everybody, rather than selling each other shit that they don't want, yes. and yelling at each other on, you know, opposing journalistic outposts, mm -hmm. I want them all to be in rooms together making dances. Yes, Or making please. theater. Yeah. You know? So why... So that goes to this question of training and an aesthetic, um, what? Uh, we have sort of aesthetic, I mean, yes, I would read a novel <coughs> that is written badly and I would have no, I wouldn't read it. Yeah. Um, what's different maybe about theater? Is there something in the groupness of theater that mitigates the sense of like, because the truth is, so I have an older kid, he's 24 now, and when he was maybe 10, we had this clown <laughs> to, the, to his party, and the clown was, uh, it was a woman clown who was part of this group of clowns, and she was clearly <coughs> mentally ill, mm -hmm. or on the verge of mental illness, it was very scary, and she did this kind of one woman performance, I won't describe it, because maybe somebody knows her, I don't wanna, um, but it was really scary and the kids were freaked out. And that is neither to me. That's just, so, so I guess this leads to a ridiculous question. It's like, well, how do you know if it doesn't even qualify as good enough to be, I like those A's, but yeah. why you, you, you. But I mean, isn't that the question <laughs> always? Like, how do we know that anything is good enough? Right. I mean, like at the end of the day, we like it because we like it, based yeah. on our education, based on our culture, yeah. based on our, every, you know, like the things that make us us. Like, like you, we treat, we, we so, so we, we, we treat community engaged work I don't know, like, like we treat it like it's fragile or dismissed. You know what I mean? Like, like there's something that we just, like, what if we just looked at it? What if we just looked at it critically and hard? And what if we, like, gave it the support and the, the, the benefit of a doubt that we give everything else? You know, and then, you know, uh, there's, there's something I, I think there's... Instead of pre-dismissing. Pre-dismissing or pre-elevating, you know right. what I mean? Of, of you know... Uh, 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 I think that I, I think part of at the heart of this is this is this divide around amateur and professional. Yeah, and I think that that's part of the that's the really complexity. At the heart of it. Yeah, you know, and 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 I think we either just dismiss the amateur or 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 we're afraid or we that we hold up the amateur. Yeah, or we're afraid that like I just spent my entire life trying to be this profession, trying to perfect this thing, and right. like somebody with no training is somehow mm -hmm. equal to me. 
and like like it's well is it possible that what the that exercise is is to um hold both the kind of naive spirit of mm -hmm. Love sport or love play, which is amateurism mm -hmm. in the word, and the kind of um, intensity of practice over time that you were talking about, even mm -hmm. with ensembles, that they create a third thing which is better than, you know, I think of like, I don't know what in my life, but when I think of virtuosity, I think of like. When I was a kid and I saw a production of Bill Ball's ACT production of Taming of the Shrew mm -hmm. on television. And there was something about the physical athleticism and virtuosity of those actors playing mm -hmm. together. Um, and that was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen that a lot since, you know, sometimes in companies. Um, the kind of like group virtuosity. And so what happens is the shell remains and the spirit is the hardest thing to maintain. Yeah. So maybe putting them together does both. I don't know, what's it like with Cornerstone? How do those, those actors who are, have spent their lives being excellent, how do they, what do they get from working with the non-professional actors? I, don't, I mean, I, I think it's different for, for each individual, but I, I, I think things that often get talked about are kind of, you know, I, I think we all just have this deep curiosity. And so like the things that we get to learn from the people that we get to make with, I think we all have deep passion for the world that we live in. And so getting to understand somebody and the place and the culture and the community in a way that acknowledges that we're guests and that, you know, that we're here to to co-make, to co-create, that tries to level some playing fields, feels good. Yeah. Uh, I think something that just, it's just so firmly rooted in a love of a form, of a way of making, of a, th of a, of a practice that, that it just kind of, you're, you're always kind of reminded of, of it because you're always kind of bringing people into it and, and each time you get to re-experience that, it's always the first time. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a comment about exactly this. Uh -huh. Do you want to read it or shall I? You go for it. Okay, this is Rebecca Novick, writing, I assume, from San Francisco. Hi. Um, when I worked with Cornerstone, we had a homeless actor playing a homeless character, and one day he said to me, this guy is nothing like me. This guy hasn't fa figured out how to handle his rage. And it was so striking to me, this idea of how we let identity lead but of course, people are just different people. That's phenomenal. That's so good. <laughs> That's so good. Boom. <laughs> yes. Sparkle. Yes. Um, yeah. What to say? <laughs> what to I mean, say? I, think it's, uh, I don't think there's anything. I, no. I, I just feel like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like it, it, it can live. It can live by itself. Yeah. Yeah. It's extraordinary. Um, I was going to yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you, because I, I feel like th you get a little peeved with this discussion. Am I just misreading? No, no, you're completely reading. You're gonna <laughs> totally got it right. Because like, totally. you just take it for granted, or because you've had No, because so I, I, I kind of feel like, I, it's that thing, you know, when we started this conversation of, I feel like I want to be in this theater, and the theater doesn't always want me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like this kind of gets to the heart of it. Like, like, there's so many people who want entry and access, and to be a part of it, and we're just, we're really mean. Like, we're really, like, just just kind of, you know, it's just. Yeah, but I got to say something here. I mean, I have watched the field that we work in ignore this work for three decades. And it is really clear to me that this work has prevailed and actually is now the dominant form in our country, even though it's not reciprocated by the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So there is hardly a theater in this country that doesn't talk about its a audience as its community in a way yeah. that it didn't. There is hardly a theater in this country that doesn't look to public works and Lear de Bessonnet's work at the public 
or look to you or other people who are practitioners of this mm -hmm. to try and bring you in to help them jumpstart this work, who doesn't look to their audience and say, my audience is aging and dying. I haven't done what I need to do to build a new audience, to root myself in it. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the kind of, um, uh, you know, what the, the, that on some level, and I don't even know how to even articulate it, I feel like this community-based and civic engagement work has won the day, and all you have to do is talk to a group of 25-year-olds yeah. to realize it. And that if the theater doesn't realize, the field doesn't realize that, it is not hip to its own demise. I don't think we realize it yet. I don't think we've fully come on board yet. Yeah. I think we're starting to. I think we're seeing like what theater doesn't have an engagement person at this point, right? right? So, but but it it becomes the function of an office, not the work of the institution. Right. And I think until it becomes the work of the institution, it's just it's just a function of a person, right. and it's not it's not genuine. And and I think we I think people are really smart about. You are like you're being sold things all the time, yeah. and I think people just know that you know, especially some of the the communities that, that they're trying to be kind of they're trying to engage with, where there's just a, a history of broken promises, a history right. of, of extraction, <clears throat> you know, it, it's it's like, are we just repeating? Right. Are we just adding to that? Right. And 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 part of it is like, I think because until an artistic director understands that this is art. And not just good work or work for yes. survival. Yes, it will. It will always be on right. the fringe. It will right. never really be treated with any kind of seriousness right. at the institution or certainly yeah. in the field. Yeah, and it's art. And it is art, and it's brilliant art, and it's important art. And I would add something else, which is, um, I mean, you know, I've done this research work about the foundings of our field, and. Um, what I was most surprised by is that the work of the art theater in America, which begins around the turn of the 19th century, begins in immigrant settlement houses that are reform houses, yeah. that are social justice works places, and starting with the Hull House in Chicago and later Neighborhood Playhouse here in New York, Henry Street Settlement, and others, that the work of creating an America of different people from different backgrounds is in the genetic code of the art theater. And that's where Ibsen and Chekhov and all those modern dramatists come to us. That's where we get Sanskrit drama in America. That's where we get, you know, um, uh, pageant plays. And so somewhere we divided ourselves yes. into art and social good when in fact they are... Is, is it professionalization? Yes. Is it at that moment where suddenly like I'm going to be the professional and, and therefore I know more, I'm more skilled, I've, yeah. I've, you know, like, you know, and suddenly... And I, I think there's a real fear I think it's a real fear to 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 put uh, non-professionals on stage. Yeah. I think I think because we don't understand the aesthetics. I think because it feels uh, like 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 I think people have people commit their lives to a practice to building a way of working, and it's just too scary to. Um, to let that go, to, to, let to that trust go. somebody who doesn't have that right. level of experience. Well, you also work your life with the sense that who wants this anyway? Yeah. So you have to doubly invest in the professionalism mm -hmm. of this art. Yeah. Um, there's a, the last thing, yeah, before, because I know finish, time, that's what it is. is yeah. um, there's, um, there's uh, and it's a, your quote, and it's something that you, it's a quote of yours that I love, oh, which I love is being about, quoted, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Something about like we have to recenter our theaters, that we have to recenter them in, you know, like like uh, uh, they, they, if if it's, uh, it's, it's like if the regional theater movement was about decentralization, we are now at a moment of recentralization and the need to recenter our, our institutions in our communities, in our places of worship, in our schools, 
in, you know, in, in our social groups and, and that, um, that that is the work before us. And I kind of feel like as we get into kind of deeper and deeper and deeper into these kind of the weeds of art and practice and aesthetic, I kind of want to, I, I hold on to that, to kind of yeah. that, um, that request, that demand, that, you know, that gauntlet um, really tightly. That's fantastic. I don't think I said it, but I'm glad to. I have. think you did. <laughs> I, I think it was you. I don't know, but I'll um, credit you if it wasn't. So Sorry. we're going to be back in about 18 minutes and with our final segment, which final will segment? be, and final chance to sign up for the May Day Art Part Challenge. Yeah. And we will, uh, we're going to read that. I'll read that at the end. And we're going to um, talk about lineage and legacy and how lineage to carry it forward. Thank you.